or for a thousand tongues to sing.
much to praise him for. We have so much to praise him for. Hallelujah. He is our king and he reigns forever. Hallelujah. We ought to sing our praises. Amen. Because we each have our own testimony. God has been good oh, for a thousand times in honor to our king. Praise God. There is really no one like Jesus. There is really no one like him. Right, Sister Beverly? There is really no one like Jesus. There is really no one like him. Praise God. There is really no one like Jesus. There is really no one like him. Hallelujah. Oh, there is really no one like Jesus. There is really no one like him. There is really no one like Jesus. Oh, there is really no one like him. There is really no one, no one like Jesus. There is really no one like him. There is really no one like Jesus. There is really no one like him. No, there is really no one like Jesus. There is really no one like him. Oh, there is really no one like Jesus. There is really no one like him. Oh, there is really no one like Jesus. Nobody, nobody, nobody. There is really no one like him. Oh no, there is really no one like Jesus. Nobody, nobody, nobody. There is really no one like him. Oh, I've walked all over. Oh, I've walked all over. Oh, I've walked all over. And then I searched all over. Oh, Lord. 
Continue worshiping, amen? Praise God. Lord and be free. 
praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. See, sometimes we can get shackled with this earthly thing. This is in uh, recognition of our black history. Praise God. They try to keep us down, tangled up in their bondage. But once you have the Lord and your heart is free and your mind is free, we had a hope. We had a hope. You may try to bind me up down here, but I am free. Praise God, I'm free. Come on and give them another praise. We thank God for them ministering, amen. Praise God. Let us not be entangled with this yoke of bondage. We're not back there in those days. So let us continue to be free in the Lord. Free up our minds. Let him transform and renew our minds. So we are not slaves to sin or other people. Because we are free in Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Stand up on your feet. We're going to welcome our Pastor Brown. Praise God. Who's going to be bringing the word of God to us this morning. How great is our God. Oh, sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God.
Somebody ought to give God praise this morning. I said, somebody ought to give God praise this morning. He woke you up this morning, and he started you on your way. You didn't have to get someone to put your clothes on. You were able to dress yourself. You were able to feed yourself. You were able to move around. So it is fitting to give God the praise, because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he has done for me my soul cried out hallelujah thank God I am saved if I was to sing a song this morning I would sing I am free I said I am free I am free thank God I am free hallelujah no longer bound in this sinful world but I am free Jesus Christ paid the price for me and I am free. I can walk around with my head lifted up. Yeah. Glory to God because I am free. Yeah. Bound in for heaven, lay home today. Hallelujah. Paul was in prison and Paul got chained on his feet. But while he was chained there, he was free. When you are in the will of God, you are free. When you are in the presence of God, you are free. No longer bound, no chain on my feet. No longer Oh, no chain is holding me back. I am free. You can be glad this morning that Jesus Christ came and paid the price. Hallelujah. Because of his shed blood this morning, I am free. Power is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Healing is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Deliverance is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Saving is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of this blood today, I am free. No longer bound in this world no more. This world is not my own. I'm just passing through. But Lord, why I'm going through, I'm going to praise God no matter what circumstances come my way. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise God. God. If the mother don't want to praise God, I'm going to praise God. My wife don't want to praise God, I'm going to praise God. My husband don't want to praise God, I am going to praise God. Because I know what God has done for me. When I think of all that God has done for me and where God has brought me from, I'm going to praise God. Hallelujah becomes a personal thing. You don't want to praise God, it's all right. Because in the Bible says every man has to give an account for the whole soul salvation. You better go ahead and praise God because God is worthy to be praised. If you don't want to praise him, the rock will praise him. If you don't want to praise him, the benches will praise him. So get, 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 get your neighbor, the neighbor, get in my way, let me praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 
Let no one stop you from praising God. Don't care what they look at you about and what they want to say. You just look at you. I'm going to praise God because when you begin to praise God, the blessing will come down. Glory. You know, sometimes you feel hurt in your body. And sometimes you feel like you can't go. But it's something when you begin to praise God. You know you can feel that pain begin to move. Because you begin to praise God. And when you begin to praise God, the devil don't like when you praise God. The devil want to silence you. But you begin to praise God. Hallelujah. And when you praise God, even in your sickness. You might be going through some sickness, Mother Coleman. But while you are going through your sickness, you can praise God. Because God is a way maker. He is a way maker. He can make a way out of no way. Sometimes when you're in your sickness, when you're going through your problems, when you're going through your hard time, he said, I am the way maker. You don't have to praise God this morning. But if you want to praise God, I know what's going to happen. Sometimes I don't feel like move. But all I have to say, Jesus. Hey. Jesus. All I have to say, Jesus. Jesus. When I'm going through some rough time. Jesus. All I have to say, Jesus. Hey. Jesus. Glory. Jesus. 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 Call him by his name. Jesus. Call him by his name. Jesus. Call his name Jesus. Jesus. Power is in the name of Jesus. Healing is in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is in the name of Jesus. Blessing is in the name of Jesus. 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 Breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you come to praise God this morning? I said, did you come to praise God this morning? Hallelujah. The word is good. But like when you come to praise God, you give God what God, what is due to God. Because there's something about praising God. When you leave here today, you know God uh, bless you because why? Of all that you are going through, you put it aside. All what you're going through, you put it aside. And you begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You say praising God is personal. Praising God is perfect. You don't have to come to church to praise God. When you're driving down the road, when you're in your car, when you're driving down the road, and you begin to, by yourself, you begin to praise God. You begin to praise God. Something happened. When you're in your house. Hey. I said, when you're in your house, sometimes you feel down, you feel stressed out. God will put a song in your heart. And when you God put a song in your heart, when you when you when you're done singing that song, you feel better. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Uplifting of the Holy Spirit. He will both shout. Thank you, Lord. I said, God is good. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I can praise God all by myself. Hey! I can praise God all by myself. I can praise God all by myself. You know why I can praise God? When I look back over my life. I look back over my life. I could have been dead and gone. I could have been dead in my sin. But because of God's protection. Because of God's touch 
I was able to make it, Mother Coleman. Nobody can tell it like I can. Because I've been through some stuff and it had to be God. When I think it over, it had to be God. I didn't make it this fall by myself. It had to be God. Hallelujah. Let me thank you, Jesus. Because, you know, I praise God by myself. In my car sometimes, I just pull over and say, Lord, come over here, sit with me. We have a conversation. And it is good to have a conversation when you are alone by yourself in a car or wherever you are. When you have a conversation with the Lord, sometimes by yourself, you can hear from God. God can speak to you in your situation. God can encourage you while you are going through. All you have to do is to trust God and take him at his word. This morning, I want to give God thanks for the Holy Spirit. He is here. Who is here? The Holy Spirit is here. If I were to sing another song, he is here. The Holy Spirit is here today. It might not be a whole lot in the church today, but the Holy Spirit is here. And God knew whom to be here today. He knows who needed to be here today. And we thank God for the, amen, the Holy Spirit today. God has been good to us. Amen. Let me get into the word of God. I'm in there. I can sit down now because we don't have a great time. <laughs> Amen. I said, we don't, have to, we don't hear a word from God already. But we got to go on to what God wants us to do. Amen. Truly, we thank God for our pastor today, our absent pastor, Pastor Gooden. And we thank God for him. Amen. He's been away. And we pray that God will bring him back safe and sound. Pastor Police today, we thank God for her. Amen. Truly, God has been a blessing to her. Amen. And her family. I thank God for all the deacons, our missionaries, evangelists. Truly, we thank God for our visitors. We thank God for our musicians. We thank God for our choir people. We thank God for our PA system. In the back, we give God. You know, God has been moving in. We, sometimes we look as it looks as if God is not doing anything. But I want you to know that God is doing a whole lot for us. When I look back at where God has brought us from, and sometimes I, I sit down by myself and I think about it, where God has brought me from. I'm talking about me. Amen. You know, I can't go back now. I can't go back into the bondage and no more. Now, I have to press on, amen? Some days, it's going to be hard. Yeah. If I were to stand here and tell you it's easy, no. But you got to press your way. You have to press your way. Sometimes you don't feel like pressing, but you got to press your way. Glory to the Lamb of God. Father, we thank you. And we praise you this morning for who you are. The God that sit high and look low. A God that understand all about us. For we were created and made in your own image. Father, today, God, we ask of your blessing and your guidance today, my God. Lord, whatever word comes out of my mouth, Lord, you have speaking, O oh God, through me. And Father God, I will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power unto salvation. We thank you this morning, God, for your people that are here and those who are on Zoom this morning. 
Father, we ask you, Lord God, to let this message be a blessing unto the ear. Let it be, O oh God, a blessing, O oh God, that they, can, they too, Lord, can share this message also with others and be an example, O oh God, into this dying world. We thank you, Lord. In this I give you praise through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank God again for this howl. And we thank God for what God has done for us. Amen. Amen. You know, as I was, you know, Pastor Gooden had asked me to speak today because he was going to be away. I said, God, what do I, what do I say? <laughs> you see, whenever time I speak or anything, I, I, I confronted God. And my, my wife can tell you. Thank God for my wife. Amen. Truly. Amen. 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 She, she hitting another milestone. Amen. So I thank God for her. Amen. Uh, truly, she got a sweet, sweet spirit in her heart. <laughs> Amen. I love that woman. Praise God. Amen. She is mine. Yes, I love her. Amen. And uh, we have a great relationship. Amen. I thank God for her. Amen. Today we are going to talk about God, our topic, God have his eyes on you. Amen. 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 I said God have his eyes on you. Amen. Because no matter where we go, the eyes of God is upon you. We can go from here to Las Vegas or China or wherever we are, the highs of God are upon us. God sees everything. Nothing is hidden from God. When we are in a place by ourselves, God is there. Hallelujah. And so today we thank God for his awesome power. Yeah. Amen. His demonstration of his holy power. God have his eyes on you. Yeah. And we're going to talk about this young man they call David. Because see, David was at a place all by himself with a whole bunch of sheep. Caring for the sheep. But while he was there, God had his eyes on David. Sometimes, God, you may be into some unlikely place. But God put you there for a purpose and for a reason to fulfill his power through you. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 16, And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long wilt thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the, the Benjamite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear this, if Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an effort with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the Lord and the elders of the town tremble at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? 
And he said peaceably, I come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come. Sacrifice Jesse and his sons. Hallelujah. And call them to the sacrifice. May the Lord add his rich blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. Today we're going to talk about, amen, God have his eyes upon you. Sometimes we can be into a place where we think that it is only you by, by yourself or there. But God knows about you before you even know about yourself. He knows what you can do before you know what you can do. When God called Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, I'm, a, I'm just a child. And God said to Jeremiah, he says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Now, the Bible tells us that Samuel began to he mourn for Saul because Saul disobeyed God. When you disobey God, God will remove his Holy Spirit from you. When you disobey God, God will take away his Holy Spirit from you. The Bible said Saul was supposed to fight against the Amalekite. And God gave him a command and said, look, destroy everything that in your path. Even the infant you should destroy. But Saul did not destroy some of them. The Bible says Saul take Aga and some of the animals, the fatling ones. But while when Samuel went back to Saul and asked Saul about it, Saul said, well, I did what God called me to do. I have obeyed God. Hallelujah. But God knew that what he, when you disobey God, God has distrust in you. God had distrust in Saul. And so Samuel was mourning for Saul. So the Bible says Saul told Samuel, in other words, he tried to make excuses. Those, the people that were, that were with me, they the one take the animals. And they, he was going to make a sacrifice unto the Lord with the animals. But God told him, he said, no, a rather obedient over sacrifice. When you obey God, you are in the blessing of God. When you obey God, God can use you. When you obey God, God will direct your path. When you obey God, God will put a covering over you. Saul disobeyed God. And so Samuel was mourning for Saul. But God told Samuel, said, look here, Samuel, stop it crying now. It's about time. Give it up. <laughs> Give it up. Because I, I have a task for you. I had my eyes on someone else. I had my eyes on a man that will do exactly what I have commanded him. Now, this is no mistake. Because David was all by himself with the sheep. Now, it's like God is saying that a young man. Now, Jesse had eight sons. Why would not Jesse send, send his oldest son into the sheep? Why wouldn't he send him? But now we would look at it and say, well, you know, the older one should be there. 
But this was in the orchestration of God's plan. When God, you know, God looked that way up there, out there. And he see, he knows what was, he knew that Saul was going to sin against him. He knew that Saul was going to disobey him. And the Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. So God said to Jesse, said to Samuel, stop your crying. He said, fill your horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Benjamite. And I have provided me a king for me. I have provided a king for me among his sons. And Samuel, you know, it's okay. When God called you to do a task, sometimes you get scared. <laughs> sometimes you get, you, you, you feel like you're inadequate. When God called Abraham, Abraham was one that said, yes, Lord. And Abraham did what God told him. Didn't question God. God told him to get out of his tantrum. He did not question God. When God called Moses, Moses said, God, you know, go back in Egypt. God said, Moses said, God, I can't speak. God said, who made your mouth? So when God called someone, God, he, he knew that you are going to be afraid. God called Gideon. Gideon ran into a cave. So when Samuel, when God spoke to Samuel, Samuel questioned God. He said, if Saul hear it, he would kill me. But now look at how God is, God is so good. Samuel said God, but God didn't give him an answer. God could have said, okay, Samuel, all right, forget it. I'll get somebody else. That to show you the power of God. God give him a command. In that moment, God give him a command. God said, if Saul here, you know, if, he said, if he will kill me, and uh, the Lord said unto, said, said take effort with thee, and say, I come to sacrifice. So God, ma God made a plan on that. Made a way. Now, the next verse, my brother. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. Now, when God called you, God just don't call you and send you out there by yourself. God already made the preparation. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord, here I am. That's all you have to do. Say, here I am. And he said, with what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me. Now, the king that was there in Israel before... That king was the king after man's desire. Saul was a king after man's desire because they wanted a king and they were angry with Samuel. But Samuel went to God and God said, They're not angry with me. They rejected God as king. They did not want God as their king. They want a man king and God gave them a man king after their own desire. And when God, when you, you better be careful what you ask God for because God will give you. And sometimes when God give you those things, you, you may not, hallelujah. He said, unto me, him, whom I name unto thee. Now, remember Jesse had eight sons. And that's a big task for Samuel. When Samuel, next verse, my brother, when Samuel 
And he said, and Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elder of the town trembled at his coming. They knew the power of God. They knew the power of God because he, whenever time you are in an area when, when the anointing show up, something will happen. You become frightened because of the power of God. Came as thou peaceably. They know what they did. And the next verse, my brother. And, he's, and, and he said peaceably, that's what he says. He said, but now look at this. If Samuel had told them what he came for, that would detort the whole plan of God. But Samuel said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself. Come with me, hallelujah, and to the sacrifice and sacrifice Jesse. Be sanctified, Jesse, and his son. And call them to the sacrifice. Now they're going to have a feast. Now in the old days when they sacrifice animals, if it was a, for the Lord, the old sacrifice would be burned. They would not eat any. But when you come as a peace offering, a peace sacrifice, portion of the sacrifice would be for the Lord and they would have a feast of the remainder. And so they would they call Jesse to the sacrifice. Next verse. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Helap and said surely the Lord's anointed is before me. It seemed like Samuel did not learn from what man had chosen. When they choose Saul, Saul was, let me put it in terms, handsome man. And so sometimes when we look at a person or we see a person, we look at their countenance, we look at their statue, we look at them, we say, well, you know, that person because of your um, your parents. You can, you know, I can use that person. Just like in the ministry today. You have people that really looks good and they're very good at speaking eloquent. And when we hear the eloquency of speech, we, we, we say, oh, that man is good, that man of the God. A man of God. And sometimes we judge people because of their appearance. And let me tell you what, you can have some people right in your congregation, in your audience. They may not look the way you want them to look, and those are, but God, let me tell you what happened. God deal with the heart of a person. You see, uh, the next verse. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or the height of his statue, because I have uh, what? What did God did? God refused him for the Lord. See what? Not as man see. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that God looking at your heart this morning? Aren't you glad that God sees your heart this morning? God knows. God don't look at your ability. God don't look at your, your looks. What God looks at is the heart. The heart of a person. When you have a heart, that's why the song says, Lord, I need a heart like thine. When you have a heart like God, you can do things. You have a heart like God, you're full of compassion, you're full of love, you're full of patience, you're full of all the quality of God. God said, look not on outward appearance, but look on the heart. And I can imagine now after 
I interview all of Jesse's sons, the seven of Jesse's sons. Samuel said to Jesse, are these all your yes, children? Now, look at this now. Jesse did not send and call his son. At, at least call your son to the feast. So now, I believe that son probably looked at himself as inadequate. He looked at himself like he was an outcast from his family. He looked as if he was the only one out there in the field. He looked like he was the only one. My father abandoned me. Now you're going to have a feast. You didn't even call me at the feast. But it didn't take, take him by surprise because God placed him there for a purpose. And sometimes we can be in the most unlikely place because God wants to use you. I remember when I was out in the job site, construction site, I would complain a lot. I said, God, someday the, the job would get so hard. And I said, God, why you have me here? And I would like, Lord, I, I, I'm ready to give it up. But God put you there because you know what? God is making you an example for somebody, somebody looking at you, somebody have their eyes on you, and somebody wants to be like you. God will place you at a place, your job, and there are people at your job that you're going through some tough time on your job. And somebody looking at you and say, well, look at you. What, 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 what really keeping you? How can you go through what you're going through and still smile? Hallelujah. I can imagine David in the, in the, sh in, in, in the, in the, in the field. In the pasture. I can remember, I can imagine David is in the pasture. But while he was in the pasture, he had to fend some lions away from the sheep. He had to fend some tiger away from the sheep. There are some night that he didn't go to sleep. He has to be watchful because of the tigers or the lion or the wolf would come and catch his sheep. And so he had to be vigilant. While he was out there in the pasture, he had time to communicate with God. While he was there, he was looking up and God was using him. God had his eyes on him right there. And another thing that what he did, he was caring for the sheep. Now, if he can care for sheep, if one sheep have a thorn in the foot, David would pick up that one sheep and tend to that sheep. If one sheep goes astray, he would go and find that one sheep. He was a caring man. And when God saw that, God looked at David and said, no, he is the one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you have a heart like God, God can use you. You know, sometimes God called us. God is in this, still in the anointing business. God is still in the anointing business. God is calling people today. Just like he have his eyes on David, God have his eyes on us today. Today. God have his eyes on us. God speak to us. Sometimes, you know, when you wake up in the midnight hour and you can't sleep, God wants your attention. Sometimes you lay down there and still turn the TV on. You get the Bible. You begin to pray. God wants your attention. Sometimes just don't think about the problem you're going to face tomorrow morning. God wants your attention. God wants to speak to you. God wants to hear from you. In that very hour, David was out there in the pasture. But David, what David was doing, David was faithful in what he was doing. He could have complained about my dad had seven sons and I am out here. He could have complained, but what he was doing, he was faithful in what he was doing. He was faithful in attending to the sheep. And that's what God saw, is faithfulness to sheep. And God said, I have my, I had my eyes on you, David. Out of all of Jesse's sons, God refused every one of them. 
Now, Samuel probably thinking, Lord, now this. All oh, Samuel, what about the other one? No, go. God told him, go get the other one. Samuel told Jesse, go fetch him, bring him. Before we even do the feast, we want that eighth son. And I can imagine when they called him, I can see David now, why my dad called him? Because he didn't know. But let me tell you something, when you are obedient, not grumbling, not disobedient, there are times that the pastor would say, do, not grumbling about what he asked of us to do, when you're, when you're being obedient, God will bless you. Yeah. When the pastor asks, let us do certain things. Let us fast. Let us go and visit the sick. Yeah. That's something that, that, that we are to be willing to do. Because see, whenever time we obey God's servant, yeah. God's blessing will come unto you. Yeah. When we disobey... God's servant, yeah. our blessing can be taken away. But I've seen David humbly. God wants you to have a heart like his. A humble heart. God wants you to have a compassionate heart. God wants you to have a heart that can reach beyond others. Their fault Look beyond their fault and look at what they need instead of talking about what they, what they are doing. Sometimes what we need to do is go to that person and what can I do to help? Instead of doing, you know, David didn't, David didn't com complain. He, he have all reason to complain. He could have said, no, I'm not going because my daddy didn't even call me to the feast. But David went because he was, even though he was there, but he was under the power of God. God was orchestrating everything that David would be king. And David came. The Bible said David came. And God said, anoint him. There's a song that I love to sing. I don't want to sing it here, but the song that we sing all the time here is that all the way from her to heaven, God will guide me with his eyes. I am looking to Jesus every day. My ears are wide open, not my natural ears, my spiritual ears. Wide open to hear from God every day, every moment, every hour. When we hear from God, God will, he will direct your path. God will, will, will orchestrate your life into his will. God will put you in the straight path. Sometimes we may be going through some rough time and God, Lord, can, can you move that? God, can you move your sickness? God, God said, no, I am there with you. I can take you right through. Now, when you go through those tough times, you can look back and say, well, how did I make it? I didn't make it all by myself. It had to be God. There are some things that we look back at, and we look back at, and we say, it had to be God. I know for me, when I look back at where I was, and the things that I have gone through, I myself even said, no, it had to be God. Nothing that I have done that's put me in the right path. It had to be God. So God, Samuel anoint David. And once David was anoint, the spirit of God Depart from Saul. God will, will, will remove 
his spirit from us. If we disobey God. And the Bible said, the Lord, but the spirit of the Lord depart from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord trouble him. Hallelujah. I can see Saul are angry. I would, I would call it he's angry. He's mad. There was, a, there was an evil spirit from Saul, from the Lord, troubled him. You know when the spirit of God leave you? When you are troubled in mind. When you are troubled in spirit. When you disobey God. You can tell when God remove his power, his Holy Spirit. Because if you disobey God, there are consequences for disobedient. We may think that we can get away with it, but there are consequences for disobedient. And the Bible said the next verse, my brother. And Saul's servant said unto him, now David's about to go to work. And Saul's servant said unto him, behold now, an evil spirit from God trouble thee. Next. Let our Lord now command thee, command thy server, servant, which are before thee to seek out a man who is what? Cunning player on an harp, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his hand and thou shall be well. What a power. Hallelujah. The person that you look at, don't, don't write nobody off. Don't write them off. You can, you, you can, you, God can take it from the pastor to the, to be a king. God can take it from the jailhouse to a palace. Don't write nobody up because see God have his eyes on everybody. God have his eyes upon his people. Now God have his eyes upon the evil also. The evil person, God of his eyes. God know when you do, when you do wrong. God sees everything that we do. We see God see everything. He see the good thing that we have done. He see the bad thing that we have done. But one thing with God, God always have his compassion. He, the Bible said, God is slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. The Bible said, the next verse, and Saul said unto his servant, provide me now a man that can play well. And bring him to me. The next. Then answered one of the servant. And said. Behold I have seen a son of Jesse. The Benjamite that is cunning in plain. And a mighty valiant man. And a man of war. And prudent in matter. And a comely person and uh, the Lord is with him. Glory to God. When God anoint you, the anointing of God will show on you. Even the very enemy will see you and know that you are a product of God. When, you know, you don't have to go and tell everybody I'm a child of God. No. When the anointing of God anoints you and on your life, you can be walking down any part of this world and somebody know that you are different because of the anointing. Because of the anointing, because there's something about the anointing. The anointing, he, he set you apart. You are supposed to be different from the world. The anointing is supposed to break the yoke of 
the bondage that we were in and place us into a place of righteousness. Take us out of sin and put us into holy place. God is calling today. God is looking for some people today. God is looking for people to, 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 to follow his instruction. You know, while I was in the world, when I was in the world, I tried to follow my own instruction. But every time I do things, I would mess up. But when I turned to God, and I said, Lord, I am tired of living this life. Even now, when I was in my sin, God had his eyes on me anyway. Because he could have taken my life. But God had his, had his eyes on me, and God knew something that I did not know. God knew that he, the person that was out there doing the wrong things, he can turn it around and start for you to do the right thing. When I look at how God called Paul, he was Saul then. And the Bible said he, well, he was on his way to Damascus. And the Lord knocked him down from his horse. Saul then was one that he was zealous in his wrongdoing. He loved what he was doing. And God said, now I can take this man and turn him around and let him do for me. God takes Saul, changes his name from Saul to Paul. And Paul has done great things because he now the same resilient that he had, he used it into the glory of God. And that's what God is saying. Today, God is looking for the anointing to work in our lives. Because see, without the anointing, we can't do nothing. We are helpless. We, are, we, we, we can't even pray without the anointing. We can't even sing without the anointing. It's something to do with the anointing, the anointing of Jesus Christ. But look, because of David, the Bible said, Jesus Christ came through the line, the line, the line of David. Because of David and how God anointed him, we have salvation today. Salvation was given through the loin of David. The genealogy of Jesus Christ. And now we can say truly, because of obedient to the Lord. I can imagine David was out there. There was some time that he, he, he probably, I'm only saying this, he probably think that why my daddy don't love me. My daddy didn't love me. Why, me, why it has to be me. But because God had his hands in certain things. At times we need not to complain because God will put us in place that, you know, just to make that different in somebody's life. You know, I spoke about myself coming in construction. There were times that I'm in the, you know, most unlikely place I would go into meetings on my job. And when I look around, it would be only me as black person in there, in the meeting. And you have all these college graduates around there sitting down around tables and we have our meetings about the building and the blueprints and all that stuff. And, 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 and I'm looking at, they've been asking me, Montego, what about this? What about? And I'm saying to my, you got a college degree. <laughs> Deacon Lark can tell you. <laughs> you. You're the one with the college for, I didn't go to college. And I would come out and I said to my wife many a times, I said, you know, it was me. It was God. In spite of what I went through, it had not been for the Lord. I know. Now, when I, when, when, when I complain a lot about my job, because I used to come home with lots of work, and I would stay up at night, I would do all of this, and I complain. But you see, God was making preparation at the end. I didn't see it. But God was making preparation at the end. And at the end, 
I look up towards heaven. And I said, thank you, God. But in what you're going through, be, pa be patient and be faithful. If you are on that job, be faithful in what you're doing. Don't give the boss a half job. Don't give him a half time. Give him your whole heart. Because see, when you do that, you are sacrificing to God. Amen. You may stand at this time. Amen. Let us praise God. Let us praise God. Let us praise God. Let us give God a round of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Is he worthy? God have his touch. Just look at three people and say, God have his eyes on you. Say it again one more time. Say, God have his eyes on you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. God's been good. We thank God today for the word. We're just going to ask God blessing upon, we're just going to pray one prayer. And we're just going to ask God blessing upon all of us. And we're going to pray that God will continue to keep his eyes on us. Because without his eyes, we are not able to make any move by ourselves. We are looking to him for our guidance. Bow your heads right there. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We give you honor today. We thank you, Lord, for this day. For this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. Thank you, God, for your highs. Your highs, O oh God, that look beyond our fault, my God, and saw our needs. My God, we thank you for just allowing us to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for not giving up on us. We thank you for the privilege, O oh God, that you have given us. O oh God, that we can come to the throne of grace. Boldly, my God, as we know how. Father God, as you have your, you had your eyes upon David, Father God, keep your eyes upon us, O oh God. That God, your eyes can steer us into the right direction. Father God, we thank you and we praise you. We pray today, my God, for peace. We pray for love. We pray for understanding. We pray, God, that you will call, the, oh God, some of your children, oh God, and you begin to anoint them for the work of service. My God, I look to you today. I look to you, my God, because in you, Lord, we all move and have our beings. And so, God, without you today, Father, we are nothing without you. Oh God, as David, oh God, have had a heart like yours, we pray, God, that you will take away the stony heart from our heart and give us a heart of flesh. That, God, we are able, Lord God, to do what you have called us to do. And, Father, to love one another and to walk into your divine will and your divine purpose. My God, we are nothing before you, God, but we thank you for just loving us the way we are. Washed us, O oh God, from all unrighteousness, O oh God, from all sins, O oh God, uh, that we have committed, Lord, and those, O oh God, that don't know you today, Jesus, we pray that we would come to know you. We pray, God, for the body of Christ, Emmanuel House of Prayer. My God, we pray for a safe return of our pastor. My God, you keep your hands upon him, O oh God, and your eyes upon him, O oh God, uh, that he will return, he and his brother would return to their destination safe. We pray, God, for those who are on the Zoom today, that, God, you will move from home to home to home, Lord. Go into every household today, my God. Uh, and, Father God, let them know that, God, you have your eyes upon them. And, God, uh, to get their heart ready for service, Lord. To get their heart ready, O oh God, for the anointing, O oh God, that you have for them, my God. That to bring them to consciousness, to have a relationship with you. My God, we pray for our young children, O oh God. O oh, merciful God, we put them before you. O oh God, we see that they are vulnerable to the enemy. O oh God, take them now, Father. Put them into your divine will, O oh God. 
Oh God, we ask you, Lord, to speak to each one of them, oh Lord, individually, oh God, and collectively, Lord. We pray today, oh God, for the sick today, Father God. We put all sick before you, my God. Those who are going through, oh God, heart problems. Oh God, those who are going through COVID, Lord. Those who are going through, oh God, uh, stress today, we put them before you, Lord. Oh God, those who need a job this morning, Father God. Those that are going through finances this morning, Jesus, we put them before you, God. You know them, Lord. You know, oh God, whom, oh God, uh, that need a touch from you today. Father God, if there is one, oh God, that don't know you, God, that does not have a relationship with you, Father, we pray, God, that you will speak to their heart, oh God, uh, that they would come to repentance, oh God, before it's too late. And so, God, I pray this morning, Jesus, for this United States of America. My God, in the Middle East, oh God, Russia, Ukraine, oh Father God, uh, we pray, God, for all of these world leaders, oh God, that they would come to an agreement, Father God, and de-escalate, oh God, uh, the pain that they would cause upon, uh, oh God, the innocent this morning. Father God, uh, we are all in your hands and your care. Father, have mercy upon us, and let your divine will and your divine prayers be known unto us, oh Father. In this, O oh God, I give you praise to your son, Jesus Christ. Let the church say, amen. 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 That's the police. Thank you for joining Emmanuel House of Prayer this morning for our Sunday worship service. We hope and pray every song and most importantly, the word of God brought forth today was truly a blessing to you and your family. If this is your first time joining us, we currently have prayer meeting Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Please enter meeting ID 436-337-528. Bible study is every Thursday at 8 p.m. on Zoom as well. The meeting ID for Bible study is 704-868-378. Please enter password 3333 for all Zoom sessions. And of course, if you are physically unable to join us, we live stream every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. here on Facebook or EmmanuelHouseOfPrayer.org forward slash stay connected. If you are in need of prayer or searching for a church home, we here at Emmanuel House of Prayer would love to pray for you and would welcome you with open arms. Join us on our website, EmmanuelHouseOfPrayer.org forward slash contact us. You can always visit our website, Facebook page, or Instagram for weekly church announcements and community news. Also, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for free, Emmanuel House of Prayer FTL, where you can view all past Sunday morning worship services. And lastly, Tithes and offering may be mailed to the church at 2820 Northwest 7th Court, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33311. God bless you all. Stay safe and stay connected.